for this video is on sequence diagrams. Um, sequence diagrams are, as far as I know, one of the least stable parts in Papyrus, so it is a bit cumbersome to draw them now and then unless you have figured out the, the different ways to fix stuff. So Papyrus guys, if you listen to this, please work on the sequence diagrams. Um, but anyway, they are nonetheless they are pretty doable and as always with sequence diagrams it depends a little bit on how much you do. If you want to have a lot of nested combined fragments and so on, it gets very complicated, uh, then maybe you should think about whether you should actually draw a sequence diagram. Um, what I'll do here is I just create a sequence diagram in the menu without any fancy name and one thing you directly notice is that it creates an interaction and also in the diagram you see there's this interaction uh, and the reason is simply that UML defines sequence diagrams on an, on an interaction between instances uh, and this is something that is very sometimes for students very difficult to understand that for example if you have a class diagram if you have a component diagram you're talking about types you talk about classifiers a component is a type, a class is a type, and so on. In the interaction you talk about instance, about objects talking to each other, um, interacting with each other. And that also means that you can't, uh, you can't have classes in here, but only instances of a class. So sometimes I have my students that want to draw classes here and they get frustrated that it doesn't work. That's because it shouldn't work. So we start drawing lifelines. Uh, Lifelines are, well, they, they describe sort of the life of an object. And again, that's why you can't have a class here, because only when you instantiate it, you get the lifeline, in a way. Uh, and if you just want to sketch, you can again just give this names. You can say, here is my, if you want, you can even say, here's my class. It just doesn't make sense. Um, but for example, you could have an object uh, of type X, and it will, it should at least show up. Uh, and here we go, this is probably the first bug. Um, let's try again. Now we're talking. Um, and you can even misuse the syntax and directly use the colonial type, what, what kind of type this is. Uh, but the better way is to say, what does this lifeline represent? Uh, and then, in this case, you have to, to create a new a new object, a new instance, and maybe at this point we go back to our component diagram. Uh, I had two components, my health information system, my pharma company, and the pharma company has some kind of ordering interface. Uh, and one thing I would like to show now is, for example, how an instance of this component would talk to an instance of, of this interface in this case. <clears throat> so what I do for this case is I, I create uh, a new property, it's basically an instance, um, and I, I put it somewhere, I can put it in my interaction for example, then I get a new dialog that creates this, uh, and I just give it some good name, HIS, uh, so the HIS is, in this case, it's an instance of my HIS component. Um, and now this shows up properly up here, um, and maybe what you get from this is that you automatically, when you draw messages later, you get the right uh, available messages. So if I just uh, draw a message now without much thought, uh, there is not really a lot I can, I can select here because the lifeline doesn't represent anything. Now, if I say I want to have a new property for my interface, in the same way as I did the other thing, so let's call this ordering, um, and it's of type I ordering, the interface I defined earlier. So again, the name is changed to reflect this, and now if I draw a message, I should actually be able to get a selection, yeah, and I can say, well, select an existing element, it will show me the methods of this interface. Um, if I want to have something else here, I can also directly create messages. So I can say, do, well, do something new. Uh, create a new operation of type do x, or of name do x. Uh, and well, then it's automatically being put into the interface. So if I save this, 
uh, and I, I look at my model, I actually see that there's a new operation that's turned up here. So it, it modifies my model. So, it, I mean, this shows that Papyrus is not a drawing tool, but it only allows you to do what you can, uh, what you have in your model, um, or modify the model. And that, of course, if you just want to draw something, it sometimes frustrates people with, with sequence diagrams. So what I've done here so far is I've drawn asynchronous messages. So they are they're asynchronous, they don't have an, an execution that replies, sort of. Uh, if you want to show that they reply, you would probably have a, a callback method, some kind of uh, operation the way back. Too bad that my, my component hasn't gotten any operations defined, so I can't select anything here. So either I would create a new message or I say no, no element. Uh, but that's just an example. Um, and of course, you can't use the reply here, because uh, the asynchronous message per definition doesn't have a doesn't have a reply message. Um, if you want to have synchronous stuff, again something that often frustrates people, um, you can select something, and now you should be able to draw a reply, but you can't, uh, and people get mad at that. And the reason for that is that you need to define your execution specification. So, for example, you could say here I'm executing some behavior, then you get the bars, um, and then you can actually draw your, your reply. So now I say I want to make an order, uh, and once the order is done I reply to this, and now you see that I can actually draw the arrow back. Uh, here is something else you see with sequence diagrams that is a bit uh, not so good right now, that you kind of have to move the mouse a little bit back and forth to get a point where you can actually draw uh, the return message. So now this works. Uh, another hiccup is if you do hierarchical things. So maybe I want to call something else. I want to print the order internally here. Uh, and I want to go from here to here. No problem. Um, interestingly, when you do the reply, you get some problems. Uh, so this, for example, I want to reply here. Doesn't work. Uh, so I can't. Out of some reason I can't draw this, what I can do is, if I draw this to the end of the specification here, it actually works. Um, and now I can move this up if I want. So this is a little bit of a strange thing in sequence diagrams. Good! What else can we draw? Um, we can draw all sorts of combined fragments. So for example, I can say I want to have sequential execution here. Uh, and if you go in here, you can select all the different options that UML offers you. Um, for example, optional, where you can add a constraint, or alternative. Uh, and uh, alternative is interesting because you would like to have different regions, same with parallel, same with uh, strict, and so on. Uh, and for this, you need to scroll down to the, intera uh, to the interaction operand. So this is basically a new interaction operand that's added on top of it. So this is how you get your different, uh, different parts here. And Maybe the conditions, um, similar to state machines, you can do all sorts of fancy thing with defining a, a constraint specification, but you can also just modify the standard one, clicking on the on the pencil here, and just write what your constraint is. Um, else, true, whatever prose text you might need. Um, this is one of the things. Uh, Please look at that the consider ignore fragment is actually separate from the combined fragment. So it's a different fragment. You won't find it if you draw a, com a combined fragment. Uh, what else is there? Of course, there are a lot of things here, and I won't use most of them in, in this example. But for example, one thing you can do is general ordering. So if you want to say that this message occurrence here is coming before this one, uh, that's how you draw it. It's, it can become a bit messy, but it can be good if you have sort of different lifelines, different executions, and you want to say that, well, this one always comes before this one. Uh, in this case, it's sort of implicit because of my ordering on this lifeline. Um, yeah, create, uh, create, delete, lost, found work as expected. Uh, there is no, no special thing here. <coughs> and... That's more or less what I will cover. One more thing is the interaction use. So that's sort of having a sub diagram. So if I want to say, 
Here, please go into another sequence diagram. Uh, I can define that. Uh, so I can say, okay, this, this interaction use refers to something else. In this case, I'll just define a new interaction. Sub interaction, I'll call it. Uh, and I don't do anything here. You could say, okay, this, this refers back to uh, an operation, for example, or a reception of a message. But I'll, I'll just keep it at this. Uh, now this points to sub interaction. And if you look at my model, uh, there is actually a, a new interaction here. And what I could do is I could define another sequence diagram for this if you want to modularize your diagrams. And I, I won't do too much here, I just define a lifeline. Uh, and now back in my original diagram, you actually see if you double click on this, uh, it should lead you to the new diagram. Yes, and this, that's it for the sequence diagrams.